Lance, the self-proclaimed Dragon Master and the current champion of the Indigo Plateau, technically making him the champion of two regions, both Kanto and Johto. Lance comes from a long line of dragon trainers, with his grandfather being the elder of a famous clan of dragon masters, and his cousin, Claire, being the dragon-type gym leader of Blackthorn City in Johto, which is actually his hometown as well. This clan's traditions is likely why the Gen 3 Fame Checker item tells us that Lance is frequently seen on the second floor of the Celadon department store, where he regularly buys new capes. Lance is said to have a large fan following in the Pokemon world, and it's easy to see why. Not only is he a very powerful trainer, but he also uses super rare Pokemon, especially given what regions he's champion of. If you look at the regional Pokedexes from both Kanto and Johto, the only fully evolved Dragon types are Dragonite and Kingdra, so his status as a Dragon trainer must be very intriguing for their residents. Lance also has a very noble and honorable nature. Whether he's complimenting a trainer's upstanding nature, noting the importance of compassion and trust towards Pokemon, or raising concerns about trainers that don't raise their Pokemon properly, Lance serves as a role model for the aspiring trainers by showing that one can be frighteningly strong while still fighting for what is right. And fight for what is right, he certainly does, sometimes at all costs. When trying to oost Team Rocket from Mahogany Town, for instance, Lance ruthlessly has his Dragonite hyperbeam a man who is preventing him from saving Pokemon, and later notes that he has to make all of the Electrode faint to stop powering the generator in the Rocket hideout despite having guilt over having to do so. Lance has a long and storied history as a member of the Indigo Plateau, as he is constantly placed as either the last Elite Four member or the champion, despite numerous challenges from some incredibly strong trainers, one of whom was even Professor Kukui of the Alola region, who says, I still remember it like it was yesterday. I went all the way to the Indigo Plateau, yeah, right to the Pokemon League headquarters, and I went right at them, cousin. And then that last guy, the dragon user in the cape, before trailing off, so we're led to believe that Lance ended his challenge pretty swiftly. Interestingly, Lance is also apparently capable of the impossible, as he has level 47 Dragonites despite Dragonair not evolving until level 55, and also has impossible moves, such as Barrier on Dragonite in Gen 1 and Rock Slide on Aerodactyl in Gen 2. At the very least, we'll call him, um, resourceful. Given all of these factors, it's evident that we are dealing with an immensely powerful trainer. But just how powerful is he? It's time to figure out how strong the Dragon Master really is and what his best possible team is by looking at all of his appearances in the main series games. It's time to figure out his true power. The first time we meet Lance is in the first Pokemon games ever, Pokemon Red and Blue, where he's the last member of the Elite Four and we're led to believe that after we defeat him, we become the champion. But <clears throat> that was not the case, because for the first time ever, someone else beat the Elite Four as we had begun challenging it and also later beat it. This explains how champions became established as part of the Pokemon League challenge, as indicated by Professor Oak in Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee. Nearing the end of the Pokemon League, we knew we were in for something challenging, but I'm not quite sure any of us were ready for this. Lance starts off with a level 58 Gyarados, followed by two level 56 Dragonairs, a level 60 Aerodactyl, and finally a whopping level 62 Dragonite. In Pokemon Yellow, the third version game for Red and Blue, Lance has the same five Pokemon at the same levels as in Red and Blue, but with some crazy move upgrades, including Ice Beam and Thunderbolt on each of the Dragonairs respectively, Wing Attack on the Aerodactyl, and Fire Blast, Blizzard, and Thunder on the Dragonite. In Fire Red and Leaf Green, the Red and Blue remakes, we get the rare opportunity to face Lance on two separate occasions. The first is when we face him as the fourth Elite Four member, just like in Red and Blue, where he has the same five Pokemon, although their levels have all decreased by two. However, his Dragonite now has a troublesome Citrus Berry item, and his team has some new moves, like all three of his dragons having access to the terrifying Outrage move, and his Aerodactyl now having Ancient Power. However, unlike with the Gym Leaders, Fire Red and Leaf Green actually gave us the opportunity to rematch the Indigo Plateau, in which Lance has become far more powerful and begins to display some of what he's really capable of. In this champion rematch battle, Lance begins with a now level 68 Gyarados, a now fully evolved level 66 Dragonite, a brand new level 66 Kingdra, an Aerodactyl which is now at level 70, and his Dragonite is now at an insane level 72. This team's movesets are also incredibly tough to deal with, perhaps most notably including Dragon Dance on the Gyarados and Kingdra. 
The next time we see Lance is in Pokemon Gold, Silver, and Crystal, in which it turns out Lance has actually become the champion of the Indigo Plateau. This is after Red, the former champion, left in order to pursue further training on Mount Silver. In this battle, Lance has a level 44 Gyarados, a level 47 Dragonite, a brand new level 46 Charizard, a level 46 Aerodactyl, and a level 50 Dragonite. Ironically enough, despite this being the first time that we face him as champion, it's also his weakest Indigo Plateau appearance, but that's likely because his power was scaled down. If we had returned to him after obtaining all 16 badges, for instance, he likely would have been much more powerful, which is actually confirmed in the remakes of these games, which we'll get into shortly. Lance is next found in the Gold and Silver remakes Hard Gold and Soul Silver, where he's actually able to be battled three separate times, unlike in the original games. The first battle occurs when we first challenge him for the championship, in which he's got the same Pokemon as our Gold and Silver challenge, except all of them are two levels higher than their Gold and Silver appearances, with the lone exception of his level 50 Dragonite. All of his Pokemon have got really great movesets now, however, which makes him quite the challenge. Lance can next be found in the Dragon's Den in his hometown of Blackthorn City, where he can actually be challenged in a double battle with the protagonist pairing up with Silver against Lance and his cousin, Gym Leader Claire, where we begin to realize just how much Lance has been holding back in our previous battle, and he gives us a taste of what's to come. In this double battle, Lance now has a level 68 Gyarados, 68 Charizard, and a jaw-dropping level 75 Dragonite. After we collect all 16 badges and rematch the Indigo Plateau, however, we get to face Lance once again and he has actually become unfathomably powerful. Or perhaps he's just using his best team at this moment now that we've fully dominated the two regions that he's champion of. Who knows? In this champion rematch battle, Lance begins with a brand new level 72 Salamence, his level 68 Gyarados, a brand new level 72 Garchomp, a brand new level 73 Altaria, his level 68 Charizard, and his level 75 Dragonite. This team makes him one of the most powerful NPCs we've ever seen, but he's certainly not done yet. The second last games we see Lance in are in Pokemon Black 2 and White 2 during the Pokemon World Tournament. Lance is the only champion who can actually be found in more than one tournament in addition to the Champions Tournament. As always, the Pokemon World Tournament automatically sets all Pokemon to level 50, but we can get a good idea of new additions to his collection and how competitively viable his Pokemon have become. As with most trainers in this tournament, Lance has some great competitively viable movesets and items on his Pokemon, which will be very useful in constructing his best team. Lance can first be battled in the Champions Tournament where he's got a Dragonite, Salamence, Kingdra, a brand new Hydreigon, a brand new Haxorus, and a brand new Flygon as well. This means he's got three new additions to his collection that we haven't ever seen before. Lance is also able to be battled in an exclusive tournament that a lot of people don't know exists called Challenge the Champion Lance, which was a 2012 exclusive downloadable tournament available only to Japanese and Korean games. In this battle, Lance has his Hydreigon, Haxorus, and Dragonite, although his Haxorus now has access to Swords Dance, and for the first time we see one of his Dragonites have the amazing multi-scale ability along with Dragon Dance. The final time we see Lance is in Let's Go Pikachu and Let's Go Eevee, which are remakes of Pokemon Yellow that take place closer to about two years after the original game. At this point, Red has apparently just set off to his journey to Mount Silver, or was at least preparing for it since we do see him outside of the Indigo Plateau after all. So Lance had become the champion but was defeated by Trace shortly thereafter, meaning Lance was yet again the 4th Elite 4 member and were able to challenge him on two separate occasions. In the first battle, Lance has a level 54 Seedra, Aerodactyl, Gyarados, and Charizard along with a level 55 Dragonite. In our rematch with Lance, he's gotten a bit stronger, but there's one key thing that we must take note of if we're to construct his absolute best team. He's got a level 64 Seedra, Aerodactyl, Gyarados, and Charizard, although his Charizard now has access to the Charizardite X Megastone, showing us that Lance has access to Mega Evolution and, of course, a Mega Charizard X. He also has a brand new level 64 Alolan Executor, and finally, a level 65 Dragonite. It's time for the moment we've all been waiting for. Using all of his appearances in the main series Pokemon games, let's construct Lance's best possible team. The first pick is going to go to what is arguably Lance's best Pokemon, his Garchomp from his Heart Gold and Soul Silver Champion rematch battle, which is at level 72. Garchomp is currently in the OU tier of competitive battling and is actually in the top 10 in the tier based on usage stats. With moves like Swords Dance and Stab Outrage and Earthquake, this thing is an absolute beast. The second pick is actually right up there with Garchomp. 
Lance's Charizard with the Charizard Ite X Mega Stone from his Let's Go Pikachu and Let's Go Eevee team, making it a Mega Charizard X. The highest level we've seen Lance's Charizard at is actually level 68. Mega Charizard X is in the upper OU tier in competitive battling, has insane base stats and typing, which also helps with his team's common ice weakness, along with amazing stab moves such as Flare Blitz, Dragon Claw, and coverage moves like Thunder Punch and Shadow Claw. The third pick is going to go to Lance's signature Pokemon, his Dragonite, from his Heart Gold and Soul Silver Champion Rematch team, which is at level 75, meaning it's his highest level Pokemon. Dragonite is currently in the UUBL tier, which means it's banned from underused but doesn't quite make the overused tier. With the incredible multi scale ability and moves like Dragon Dance, Stab Outrage, and Aerial Ace, along with priority extreme speed and coverage moves such as Ice Punch, Fire Punch, and Iron Tail, this thing is certainly a threat that needs to be considered for anyone hoping to challenge Lance. The fourth pick is going to go to another of Lance's pseudo legendaries, his Salamence from his Heart Gold and Soul Silver Champion Rematch team, which is at level 72. Salamence is also in the UUBL tier like Dragonite, but is slightly lower in usage stats and is of course a little bit lower in level as well. With the amazing Intimidate ability to lower the opponent's attack, along with moves like Stab Dragon Claw and Earthquake, Crunch, Stone Edge, and Shadow Claw for coverage, Lance's Salamence is a very fast and hard-hitting threat. The second last pick for his best team is going to go to his Gyarados from his Fire Red and Leaf Green rematch battle, which is at level 68. Gyarados is also in the UUBL tier and really helps to mitigate this team's ice weakness. Gyarados also has the great Intimidate ability so it could work really well switching between it and Salamence, and also has great moves such as Dragon Dance to power it up, along with Stab Waterfall and coverage moves like Crunch, Iron Tail, Earthquake, and Ice Fang. Gyarados is a threat that must be dealt with immediately or else it only becomes more and more threatening. And the final spot on Lance's best team is going to go to his Hydreigon from his Black 2 and White 2 Pokemon World Tournament teams. Now this thing is automatically set to level 50 in the tournament, however Hydreigon can't be obtained earlier than level 64 since that's when it evolves, so we know that that's the minimum level that it's at. Hydreigon is currently in the underused tier of competitive battling and provides a great special attack which is sort of lacking on the rest of Lance's team. With the Levitate ability, amazing stab moves such as Draco Meteor and Dark Pulse, and coverage moves such as Earth Power, Fire Blast, and Focus Blast, Hydreigon definitely provides some great things that the rest of Lance's team needs for better synergy. Lance also has some other amazing Pokemon that, while they don't quite make his best team, are definitely alternatives to consider. First is his Haxorus, which we unfortunately have no indication what level it's at since it's automatically set to level 50, and the same goes for his Flygon. Aside from that, he has his level 70 Aerodactyl, which is outclassed by his other fast physical sweepers, his level 66 Kingdra, which is outclassed by his Gyarados and would only really add another dragon weakness to his team, and his level 73 Altaria, which just generally isn't a good dragon-type Pokemon without his Mega. Well, there we go, everyone. We have discovered Lance's true power and unveiled his strongest possible team in the main series games. If you enjoyed this video and are looking forward to more from this series, please be sure to leave a like, share it on social media, and subscribe with notifications on by hitting that bell icon if you haven't already. All forms of support help a ton and are really, really appreciated. Don't forget to comment down below with what trainer you wish to see featured next. The comment with the most likes will pick the trainer for the next episode and will be featured on screen. This has been Silph Spectre, and I'll see you guys next time for more True Power.